Selling your own home without a real estate agent is hard, but it's not impossible. If you live in Las Vegas right now in 2021, your home value is probably going through the roof and maybe you're thinking, hey, I could sell, grab some money out in equity and buy a different house or maybe move to a different city. I totally respect that decision to try to sell on your own. I think it's an awesome decision and I think it's an awesome time to try that. So in this video, we're gonna be going over all my best tips, tricks and tactics for you to sell your home on your own without a real estate agent like myself. And so stay tuned because we're getting after it right now. Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're just tuning in for the first time, thank you so much for tuning in. Please go down below, like this video, hit that subscribe button, that notification bell. That way you're notified every week when I put out new videos. If you're returning to the channel, thanks so much for coming back. It's good to see you uh, come back again. Same thing, please like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell if you haven't already so you're notified of every new video. In today's video, guys, we're gonna be talking about how you can sell your home without a real estate agent or a realtor. Guys, I don't know if you know this yet, uh, but I am a realtor here in Las Vegas, and I talk to people every day who wanna sell their home on their own because uh, they wanna try to save money, and I totally respect that, guys. I haven't been a realtor forever, and I used to own a home before I was a realtor, and I totally understand the uh, idea of wanting to sell your home on your own and try to save some money, it's hard, but it's not impossible. So we're gonna go over the best ways to do it and some things uh, you might not know about the process uh, and just some stuff to help you do it in the most efficient way possible. So none of these things are necessarily in a particular order. There's all things you need to know and little tips and tricks that can help you along the way. And with that guys, let's get started with the first one. All right, guys, the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is go get a new phone, like a burner phone from the corner gas station or something, buy some minutes, buy some text messages, because you're gonna to have to post your listing online, which means you're gonna to have to post your phone number so that people can get in touch with you. Now, there's gonna be a couple different types of people that are gonna get in touch with you. So interested buyers, whether they have an agent or not, are gonna to try to call you. Uh, and investors, whether they have an agent or not, are gonna to try to call you. And then agents, whether they have a client or not, they're gonna to try to call you. So uh, you're gonna to wanna to pick up the phone for all of them, but let's talk about the agents for a second. So when a realtor or real estate agent sees a for sale by owner property, sometimes it's called a FSBO, F-S-B-O is how it's abbreviated. They often wanna get in touch with that FSBO because they wanna convert you from a for sale by owner to a for sale by agent, right? They want to get your business. They want you to get to sign a contract to sell with them so that they can get a commission. That's what real estate agents do. That's what realtors do. That's how we get paid, right? We're only paid on commission once the sale goes through. Uh, so they're going to be calling you whether they have clients or not. And they're going to be bugging you about your plan, how long you're planning on selling on your own, uh, that sort of thing, your pricing. They're going to try to schedule listing appointments with you. They're going to try to schedule all sorts of stuff with you, home viewings, um, and maybe you don't want that stuff. You know, if you're hardcore into selling on your own and you have six months or a year to wait for that home to sell, then you're not really going to be interested in those listing appointments. Now, is it a good idea to listen to what some of them have to say? Yeah, of course, that because that's the backup, right? If you can't sell it on your own and you still want to sell, then the backup is getting an agent to sell it for you. But just because that's the backup plan doesn't mean you want to be bombarded with calls and text messages and emails all the time. So get a new phone, a new phone number that you can post uh, and get a new email, same thing, so that when the sale is done, when you sell it, then you're done with. Or when you don't sell it, you know, you have a number, an easy number to contact the agents with, that sort of thing. Uh, and so your personal phone doesn't get spammed. Because even if you manage to sell it yourself, guys, all those real estate agents out there, all those realtors, they are probably still going to try to get in touch with you. Uh, to see if you want to sell, you know, a year or two from now, they're going to want to see, hey, does this guy want to sell his, uh, the home he just, you know, the ho home he just bought? Does he want to sell that? Does he want to buy an investment property? Does he want to do this? Because now they have your number and you're essentially a lead, some kind of a lead to, to everybody. So make sure you get a different number so you can just throw that phone away and you won't get hit with any of those calls later in the future. Next, guys, and this is kind of a tip answering the phone. So when that new phone rings, you're going to want to answer it and you're probably going to pretty much going to want to answer it every single time. And now of course you don't need to answer it all hours of the night, right? If somebody calls you 
at two or three in the morning, yeah, nobody expects you to, to answer that phone call. And I honestly, I don't know why someone would call you at two or three in the morning, but in the real estate business, it does happen. The reason you wanna be picking up that phone uh, is because sometimes buyers, investors, agents, they get cold feet, right? They're calling you, they're excited, they wanna see your property, they wanna buy it right now, or they think they do, but then you don't pick up the phone, maybe they start second guessing themselves, maybe they see a different property, and then they schedule to see that property for this time slot that they were gonna see yours in. Things like that happen, guys. There's a whole laundry list of things that can happen. So you wanna be picking up that phone every single time. Um, and you know, this is a problem. You know, if you if you work a full-time job and you're trying to sell your home on, the, on your own, or even if you don't work a full-time job, uh, you are just probably gonna be bombarded with calls and it's a pain in the butt to kind of pick up all of them. I mean, this is one thing that a realtor or real estate agent does for you, right? You don't receive any phone calls. They pick up the phone. They do all of that for you. But since you don't have one, you got to do it yourself. Uh, but you don't want to be scaring people away, guys. So I do recommend if they call, pick up the phone, um, at least set up some kind of a good voicemail and like, give, you know, say you're going to give them a call back or send, shoot them a text message, something like that. So that they know you got your message and that they know. Uh, you know, you're paying attention and they can get back in touch with you about the sale of your home. Next thing to consider is showing your home. So as soon as you post it, at least Las Vegas 2021, more than likely you're going to get a rush of people who want to come see the home, whether they be realtors with clients, investors, whatever the case may be, you're going to have a rush of people wanting to see your home. Now, if you live there, that can kind of be a problem right because you live there so you have your stuff there right uh, and then people want to see your home but you're living there so you have people in the space that you're living with your stuff and let's talk about stuff for instance so my stuff to me is my stuff your stuff to you is your stuff but when you walk into someone's home that you don't know it's pretty common or let's rephrase it this way when a buyer walks into a home of a seller they don't know that seller it's common for them to kind of see your stuff is not junk, but it's just stuff. It's clutter because it's not their stuff. They don't know where it goes. They don't know much about the home. They're seeing all this for the first time, right? So you want to make sure your stuff is as cleaned up and organized as possible. Uh, if you had an agent, this is something they can help you with. If you don't have an agent, you're doing this on your own. I mean, that's what this video is about. Uh, maybe, you know, read some articles about staging your home or hire a professional stager to kind of organize your home, get things put in place so those prospective buyers um, you know, don't see your stuff as junk because that can turn people off from your home. And it's not always possible to move out of a home uh, before you sell it. Most people use the equity in their home to buy the new one, that's really, really common. So if you can't move out, just make sure everything is in order and tip top shape. Uh, but then we, once you get that, now you have to schedule showings, right? So you have to keep your house in tip top shape and then you have to schedule showings. So showings, depending on how long someone wants to see the home, I mean, it might be a five minute showing, it might be 10, 20, 30, they might be there half an hour, 45 minutes. You really don't know. So you're going to have to coordinate by yourself. You're going to have to coordinate with all these different agents who have all these different clients. And you're going to have to coordinate with some people who probably don't even have agents, some people who just buy in on their own. Um, which is which does happen. You're gonna have to coordinate with all these different people. You're gonna have to keep all of it straight so that you have everybody scheduled. Um, and sometimes, you know, showings can overlap. It's not really that big deal to have more than one group of people in your home at a time. Uh, but you do want to keep it organized. You want to keep track of who's there, what time they're there, what time they leave, all that sort of stuff. And then uh, continue with that, guys. We're gonna talk about you know keeping your home locked. So if you live there. You don't want to be giving out keys, right? You can't just be giving out keys to people. Sometimes you can have a uh, digital keypad on the door. So, you know, maybe you leave and then 10 minutes later, the agent with the client shows up and they have the, the, the number, but that number doesn't change and it's not unique. It's just one number. Everybody uses the same number. So everybody knows the same number to unlock the door to get into your home. Now, of course, there's a chance that that number is going to get in the hands of a buyer uh, who maybe wants to see your home at some off hours when they shouldn't be, um, which does happen, unfortunately. And same thing, maybe it gets into the hand of a real estate agent or a realtor who wants to see your home at an unscheduled time and they know you're not there. These things do happen, guys. 
Not everybody uh, has, has your best interest in mind. So you're gonna have to figure out a way to stay on top of security. So sometimes you can get your own lockbox also that just has like, you know, a lockbox you hang outside your home. But again, that only has one code. Uh, so that's kind of a, a, a bummer when it comes to showing your home. Now, of course, you can always be there for the showings, but if you work or even if you don't work, then you got to kind of listen to the buyer's comments and that sort of thing. That's not always the best of idea because then you have face-to-face -face conversation with buyers can sometimes hurt deals. So if you are there for the deal because you're uncomfortable with people having a key or a access code to your home, just, you know, kind of stay quiet, stay out of the way, um, let them do their thing. But that's the good thing about hiring a realtor, guys, is they can get you a lockbox, a Bluetooth lockbox, where every realtor has their own individual code. So you know exactly when someone shows up, you know exactly when they leave, you know exactly who's been there. So if something does go missing, or someone breaks into the home, anything like that, you have a timetable of this is exactly who was in my home and this is exactly when they were there. So that's really important. Security is a big thing for a lot of people. Uh, also, especially if your home is vacant, right? If your home is vacant and you don't have one of these Bluetooth lock boxes, you're gonna give out a code <clears throat> to your own personal lock box or to the, you know, like the front door keypad lock box. And, you know, if it's vacant and somebody learns that code and they know it's vacant, then they can come and go as they please. And unless you were there, or you had some cameras set up, you would never know. So just be careful. Really think about how you're gonna do security. And, um, you know, if you want, you can always uh, talk to a realtor about getting a lockbox and hiring them to show your home, something along those lines, and they might be able to help you with that. Once people call you about the home and once people see the home, then you're probably going to want to follow up with them. Some people will love the home and they'll want to follow up with you. Other people will like the home less than that and maybe they won't follow up. Maybe they'll forget. Uh, maybe something else will happen, any number of things. If you want to sell your home quickly, then you want to be following up with uh, everyone who sees your home, everyone who has an interest in your home. And this, again, goes back to that uh, new phone number I talked about earlier, guys. You don't want to be using your personal cell because then your personal number is going to get spammed with all these text messages, voicemails, calls, all that sort of stuff. So make sure that you're following up with people because if you don't follow up, there's a chance that your dream client might lose interest, might move on to something else, might think you forgot about them, might think the home is sold, any number of things can happen, guys. If they have good agents, then those agents should be following up with you, but not everyone has a good agent, uh, unfortunately. And, you know, things things happen. So you want to do your best to follow up because uh, you don't have an agent. So you're doing all the work to get your home sold, which means you have to do the follow-up and you have to do the showings and the coordination and all that sort of stuff. So just keep that in mind. At some point in the process, probably before, uh, I definitely recommend before you post the listing online, you're going to want to get professional photographs. And I cannot stress this enough, guys. You really need to get in touch with a really good home photographer. Uh, they're going to be probably going to be able to help you with a little bit of the staging as well, because that's what they do for a living, right? They take nice pictures of nice things. Get in touch with a good photographer. Good photos sell homes. Because the first thing a buyer is going to see when they look at your home online are the photos. There's going to be all sorts of numbers about bed, bath, this, that, and other thing. But what people care about is, oh, wow, what's the kitchen look like? What's the bathroom look like? What's the backyard look like? What condition is the carpet in? What color are the walls? All things that are not written down. Okay, all of those things are in the photos for people to see. If you do not have good photos, there is a good chance you will be pushing away a lot of prospective buyers or that agents will see those photos and say, yeah, my buyer's not gonna be interested in this. I'm not even gonna show it to them. And if people don't see the photos of your home, if they don't know what's up for sale because the photos suck and the agent never tells them about your home, then they're not gonna buy your home. So spend the money. It might be a few hundred dollars, but it doesn't matter. Spend the money and get some really good photographs taken. If you have a realtor, then they would coordinate this for you. They would be there with the photographer helping you stage the home helping to get into lighting correctly, all that sort of stuff. But since you don't have a realtor, that's all on you. And I cannot stress that enough, guys. Get some good photographs and post them as many places as you can because that's the number one way you're gonna sell your home and you sell your home fast for top dollar. We touched a little bit on this already, but you wanna make sure your home is organized and staged properly. 
yeah, if it's a vacant home, you don't need to go necessarily filling it with a bunch of uh, staging furniture like you see on some HD TV programs. A, a vacant home, an empty home, is totally fine for buyers. It's, it's easy enough for them to see their own stuff and imagine their own stuff in that home. But if it's not vacant, you're living there, you're really gonna wanna get in touch with someone who knows how to stage a home. Uh, or if you can't afford that, that's fine. I understand that, it's not everybody can afford that sort of thing. Just make sure your stuff is organized. Hide as many things as you can. I mean, valuables especially, everybody knows that. But just put away as much stuff as you can. Clear your kitchen countertops. Buyers don't like stuff on kitchen countertops. Uh, make sure your furniture is all neat. You know, everything's clean. And just kind of organize as best as you can and hide as much clutter as possible. Because like I mentioned earlier, buyers will see, it's unfortunate, but buyers will see a lot of your stuff as clutter because it's not their stuff and it's not their home. So they don't understand why that thing is sitting over there, even though you might have 1,200 reasons to why it's there. They just see, oh, I wouldn't put that there. I don't know why that's there. That's clutter, right? And that can happen and that can push people away from buying your home. So make sure everything's organized. Make sure everything is staged as best as possible. If you can hire a professional stager, great. If not, just research some stuff online. Hey, watch a YouTube video just like you're doing now because you can learn anything on YouTube. Highly recommend. It will help you sell your home faster and for more money. You're also gonna wanna think about a sign in your front yard. Now, this is a pretty cheap, easy option for sale signs. You can buy at Lowe's, Home Depot, any number of places for, I would say, less than 30 bucks, definitely. Um, and same thing with open house signs, guys. If you're gonna hold an open house, it is a good idea to buy some open house signs and kind of post them around the neighborhood. Check if you're living in HOA, which is very common in Las Vegas, make sure you check about with the HOA what their rules are about open house signs because security or other members of the HOA might take your signs down and just toss them and they won't tell you about it because, oh, they violated the rules. So I'm just going to throw their sign away. It's their fault. You know, they should have checked before they put the sign up. That happens to real estate agents all the time. Real estate agents, I know, luckily it's never happened to me, uh, but it happens. It happens more frequently than you think. So make sure you know the rules. Make sure you know where you can put signs, where you can't put signs. You don't need a ton of signs, guys, uh, but the more signs you put up, the more likely people are gonna see that your home's for sale and they're gonna see that you're holding an open house at any particular time. So make sure you get some signs, put them up, know where you can put them up. As far as your front yard sign goes, like I said, they're, they're pretty cheap and easy to get. Uh, but if you did have a real estate agent or decided to get one, they would put up a big, beautiful color sign with their face, some information about the home, some leaflets for the home, bed, bath, square foot, price, maybe some layout stuff, talk about upgrades, that sort of thing. Uh, if you're putting a sign out there, it's a good idea to make those leaflets too. Um, you can contact an agent and they can probably help you make those leaflets at no charge. Or again, go on Google, go on YouTube, look it up yourself. It's not that complicated. You really don't need someone to do it for you. Uh, but sometimes you can find like a really nice template that'll simplify the process where you just throw the information in, throw a few of the professional photographer photos in, uh, and then do have it printed at like a good place. If you don't have a great printer, um, I would recommend going to like a FedEx office or uh, Staples and have the, the leaflets printed really nicely with really nice color photos so that whoever takes them, and a lot of people, especially if they're on a busy street, uh, there's a good chance a lot of people will stop by and take those leaflets. They're not that expensive, uh, but they can be distributed pretty widely, pretty easily if someone's driving past your home and they're looking for a house. Uh, you live on a busy street, hundreds if not thousands of people could drive past your home every single day. And if just a small percentage of those takes the leaflets, then that's awesome, you know, that that's going out and a lot of people can see those. So do a good job on the leaflets, do some research about how to make them or contact someone and have them made for you. Guys, if you haven't already, please go down below, hit that thumbs up, subscribe, and that notification bell. That way you'll be notified of every new video I put out. I love making these YouTube videos. Uh, it's so much fun and allows me to reach out to you viewers, you buyers, you people who are moving to Las Vegas and give you as much information and really value as I can because that's what I'm all about, guys, giving my clients value. So please do that. It really helps me in the YouTube algorithms. And if you're moving to Las Vegas or you know someone who is, um, or even if you already live here and you're thinking about just buying a new home somewhere else in the city or even right down the street, my contact information is probably on the screen somewhere and it's down in the description. Look me up. I promise to have your back when moving to Las Vegas. All right, guys, let's talk about the next tip, uh, which is going to be price your home correctly. 
Uh, I would say this is probably the number one reason that for sale by owner properties sell for less than um, agent sold properties. And historically, there have been studies, it's like 10, 13% on average uh, for sale by owner properties will sell 10 or 13% less than um, for agent for, for sale by agent properties, right? So if you don't want that to happen to you, uh, the number one thing you're gonna wanna do um, is price the home correctly. So you can do that in a lot of different ways. Realtors, real estate agents, we love handing out free stuff and go talk to a few different realtors. If you know some, if you don't know some, find the top realtors in your area. Uh, if you're in Las Vegas, I will be super happy to do this for you. Totally free. Uh, talk to those people and give me your address. Tell them what you want to do. Get a free home valuation or professionally it's called a CMA comparative market analysis. Um, so we're going to look at your home and we're going to compare it to other homes in the last six months that have sold in that area, about quarter mile area or half mile radius around your home. It varies uh, depending on the market, but we're going to look at that and we're going to come back with a professional evaluation about what the price of your home is. The reason you need to do that is because Zillow, Redfin, Trulia, all those other places, they really don't give you the most accurate price of your home. And let me give you an example of that, guys. I sold my home in November 2020 and I sold it for $40,000 more than what Zillow told me it was worth. So don't let that happen to you guys. Don't leave $40,000 on the table. Get a couple professional valuations from a few different realtors because everybody has kind of has their own process for doing this. And then come up with a price on your own once you get, uh, I would say at least three uh, market, three home valuations, three CMAs, whatever you want to call them. Some other reasons why pricing is important. If you price your home too high, you look emotional and you don't look serious about selling your home uh, because you know buyers and buyers agents go like, okay, well, if they were serious, then they would price their home at market value because they'd be serious about selling it, right? And it also kind of makes you look a little greedy because you're trying to get more money for the home than the home is worth. And you don't wanna look like any of that because it just, it really sets you up for failure and it sets you up for a bad conversation with buyers before you even get a chance to talk to them or their agents. If you price your home too low, it signals desperation. It signals that there's something wrong with the home. And those are all things, of course, buyers look for. They want a cheap home. They want to buy your home at the lowest amount possible. But also investors, because investors know that they're probably going to have to invest into the property, invest some money into the property, whatever it may be, fix some things up. So if you're selling for less than the home is really worth, you're probably going to get a lot of investors, a lot of buyers, and they're going to try to lowball you because you're already low. So why not lowball them a little bit more? Because they think you're desperate and they think there's something wrong with the home. So make sure you price the home correctly. It'll give them confidence in the home. It'll give you confidence that you're going to get good offers. And it'll give the agents confidence uh, in the fact that you are a, a serious seller and you want to sell your home at the right price to the right buyer. Last but not least, guys, marketing. This is another thing you need to think about before, during, and pretty much right up to the point that you sign that, uh, uh, what am I thinking of? Sign the residential purchase agreement from a, a buyer. Sign the paperwork with a buyer because you don't have a realtor, don't have a real estate agent. So you have to do all this marketing on your own. Now, usually you can pay a, a brokerage to pay an agent to post your home to the MLS, multiple listing service. That's the service that allows realtors to look at all sorts of different properties in their area that are for sale, for rent, that sort of thing. Um, so if you can get it posted there, great. If you can't, I mean, you can post to Zillow, you can post to forsalebyowner.com, you can post to literally, literally hundreds and hundreds of different websites. You wanna post to as many as possible. The more places you post, the better. Uh, and when you're writing that, when you're, when you're doing those posts, you want to post lots of good professional photography, the more, the better, uh, and make sure, you know, if you're getting the professional photography done, here's another quick tip. Uh, when a photographer takes a photo, that is their work of art, right? So they're taking the photo, you're buying it from them, but you'll generally sign a contract, like a use contract that talks about, uh, where you can use the photos. Make sure that that contract includes things like Zillow, Google, all of those places, because when you start posting photos out there, you can't always get them back. Uh, and if that photographer didn't know that you were gonna post them there, that's their artwork, right? If you post somewhere that they 
don't approve of and it's not in the contract of sale for the photos, then they can sue you. A lot of people don't know that. And sometimes photographers are just trying to make a quick buck. So they sign a crappy contract with someone who doesn't know any better because who would think about that, right? And then they come around, they turn around and sue you and they make a bunch of money off of you because you know you didn't know any better, but they did and they just screwed you out of some money. So make sure that that's the case. Make sure you can use the photos wherever you want for as long as you want and the photographer doesn't care. It might cost you more money, maybe not. Uh, that's pretty standard nowadays, but not all photographers do the same thing. So post some good photography and learn how to write a good uh, description of your property so that when people see the photos, they go to the description. Wow, everything, everything really flows. Everything jives, everything sounds good, that sort of stuff. So you want to make sure both of those things are on point. And like I said, post to as many places as possible. If you're moving to Las Vegas, thinking about moving to Las Vegas, or maybe you know someone else who is moving to Las Vegas, please have them look me up. My contact information is down here in the description. They can reach out uh, via call, text, email, pigeon carrier, however you guys want to get in touch. I promise to have your back when moving to Las Vegas. And if you haven't already, please go down below, like and subscribe this video, hit that thumbs up button, because all that really helps me in the YouTube algorithms. And hey, if you had a question, if you have some tips for some for sale by owners, please put that down in the comments section. Uh, I will always answer everybody's comments. I'll get back to every question you have. I love doing this, guys. I love getting in front of you and helping you move to Las Vegas. Uh, and I love talking to you about Las Vegas real estate. So if you need anything at all, please reach out. Until the next video, guys, have a great day.